welcome to the plot device uh, re-release, five year anniversary commentary. It took us five years to do this commentary. Yeah, I'm Seth Worley, I'm the writer, and direct, co-writer and director of Plot Device. I'm here with... I'm Neil Hoppy. I'm the producer. I'm Ben Worley, I'm the main character and the composer. This character is based on you and played by another actor. Yes, like Zach exactly. Uh, yeah. Or Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf portrayed you accurately. Betrayed me. Well, the character's name is Ben. That's true, because we're so of your creative. incredible script. Oh, we're going to be those annoying guys who pause the movie and talk about it. Yes. Um, so if you're related to us in any way... You're the will... only ones listening to it. Oh, do you do this when friends come to... Okay, uh, when friends make come to Make them watch house, my old videos? Of course. I make them watch yours. I go and video <laughs> old, old films. All right, this first shot, man, there's just so many really boring things to share. This first shot, we did this prologue way after the original Way shoot. after, like three months after. That room was not clean, it was filled with stuff, mm -hmm. and we were crammed up in there. And what's great about this is that we could light the scene with the lights in frame, as you see the airy light right there, because the idea is this Ben was a filmmaker. Uh, we wanted to establish that right off the bat, that you were a filmmaker in an interesting way without it being too cliche. This is on a slider, pretty cheap. Sliders were fairly new things at the time. They were being democratized yeah. into things. And we got one, and this one was... Like a two-foot slider, three-foot slider. And I hate sliders, and I've said this in public before, because they look like... They, they just get you shots that look like they're going back and forth two feet. Yeah, like you don't have a dolly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just looks like you don't have a dolly. <laughs> and this one specifically mounted on a tripod, but when you got when it got toward the end, the thing would bend and lean. So the front and end of this shot are actually is that, Dutch, slightly. Is that a light? Uh... Right there, light plug that's above me? Yeah, yeah, probably. That's totally a cord. Yeah. Well, and we could do that because you're a filmmaker. Because I'm a filmmaker and I light my desk with that. Well, now, these film, these posters in the back, also, back here, were, uh, we wanted to fill your, you know, space with posters to show you're obsessed with movies. And uh, we couldn't get copyrighted things. We are in, in one of the first displays of the amazing magic of the internet that Arn harnessed. Uh, put out a tweet through Red Giant's Twitter account asking for posters and like customers and fans of ours sent a bunch of posters we, with permission to use. The Neighbor Rebels Guide is Stu Mashwitz's book. It's amazing. It's still relevant today. It was Arn's idea. I don't remember what the original version was. It was that he found the plot device online somehow, and Arn was saying, what if it was a customer's also bought thing? And it was on DB yeah. Rebels Guide. And he, Arn, had the guts to like give us his idea and go do it before ever getting appro approval from Stu. And Stu is a very... <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. And Stu, Stu is one of those guys who, if he doesn't like something, he has no reason to not tell you. When he finally saw the film, he, he not only approved of it, he loved it, which was one of the biggest compliments ever because there was pretty much nothing we could do about it at that point um, with the DV Rebel guy. Yeah, um, too late. That's your credit card, Neil. That's my work credit card. Well, this is Neil's credit card. We just volunteered, Neil, <laughs> volunteered Neil's card to be used. To be honest, I get volunteered for everything. Yeah, everything. Uh, especially, you know, opening yourself up to identity theft. It's, it's, look yeah. at the way he's holding it. He's strategically trying to cover. We have your fingers in a way. This this was very strategic. You holding your fingers yeah. in a way that didn't look like you were trying to cover up all information. Right. Uh, but to uh, at least cover up Neil's signature, the majority of his numbers. We're not covering up the security code on no. the back. Um, this card is no longer valid, everybody. <laughs> Let's be clear about that. Did it, did it ever? Anything ever? Happen? No, it never got stolen. You were but one of the ones. There were some up there. I remember who got their stolen, and all that was purchased with them was Warcraft. Points or Warcraft. Nice. That, was, that was Matt Hale's card. I that think. was Matt Hale's card. Yeah, but Matt just was. It was Matt. It was just, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Warcraft. <laughs> Warcraft. Warcraft. <laughs> um, so, you always said said this is your favorite of my music because it was subtle. It was well because this movie's full of like bombastic stuff and everything adventure now prior you you know done all this Jakinui bombastic stuff and I love this was so subtle and it felt like a scene from The Incredibles, mm. like it, it was just you're doing. You weren't being show offy, but you were doing really interesting stuff. I do remember that shot. The super close ups have been you and Arn going back and forth about there was a nose hair. This one. Yeah. That's the one. There was that a had nose to be hair. painted out. The nose. point is Ben is Ben is just like real people. He's a, well, ben is <laughs> just a like real he's a performance artist. <laughs> yes. Here's my Scott Pilgrimy cuts and transitions here, which I saw while working on the film. The barefoot thing, I don't remember when that came into play, it was just a matter of like, you said he's that, running out to the mall. That to, uh, John McClane's always barefoot and all like, it's always, things are worse when you're barefoot. Well, it's so. definitely a, a diehard reference, yeah. but I think it was also just, what can we make that's interesting and weird here of him? It just made you more vulnerable. The male it's thing. one of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> just abandoning the male. <laughs> complete disregard for his parents' bills and <laughs> life. So Neil, talk a little bit about this button. There's a backstory here. So when we shot something at our 
current, our former current job, it was for Adventure Now 2, uh, we needed a cutoff button, and I found this button uh, that was super sweet on eBay, and I ordered it, and it came a day after our shoot. So this sat on my desk for at least a year. I mean, just sat on my desk at work, and just not doing anything. And so then you came to me, and you said you had this idea, and... Well, and I had the idea because of this. Arn had come to me, his little Baxter Arn had... had yeah. Well, he found my smoke monster thing that I made yep. for a Lost co uh, contest, which there's a story, I tell a story all the time, but basically it was an ABC contest they did in the last season of Lost for fans to submit their, their own uh, commercial for the... Uh, finale. Se finale, series finale. And I made one using Trap Code Particular to make the smoke monster, which, by the way, the smoke monster is basically a preset in Trap Code Particular. Um, so it was not that difficult. And there's a tutorial on there because Aaron found it. Smoke uh, monsters for all. Aaron found it because he has a Google alert for anything Red Giant stuff and contacted me, asked me to do a tutorial. And while I was in the tutorial, he went and watched Adventure Now, uh, at least two and three. So we did three seasons of it. And he wanted to, had previously pitched to the Red Giant. To, he wanted to make, he said, I want to make a film that is just a, a badass short film on its own. But and, viral. But viral. <laughs> but viral. I want viruses shooting out of it. I want, he's like, I want the BTS attached to it that shows off all of our stuff. But I want the film to have its own legs. Um, when he saw Adventure Now, he was like, hey, would you be interested in doing this? And he had the funny idea to do something that was like a guy, it was like, this is your footage on Mag without Magic Bullet, and it was like a guy goes out and gets his mail. He's like, and now when we apply Magic Bullet, you'll see it looks like it improves the film, and it's like, a totally different film. He goes to get mail and gets shot at in explosions. <laughs> it was really funny. We wrote that. We both agreed what we were writing wasn't working and we could not f make this work. And I did not want to come back and say, it's not working, your problem. Because I really wanted to get a relationship with Red Giant so I can get free software for Free life. software for all. <laughs> so That was the point. That was the that was honestly the like core point from the very beginning. And so I, th I was like, what do we have to work with? This is what all like most ideas kind of start with, for me at least, is like, what do we already have to work with? And I thought of the button uh, and I thought of any other Ben had told me one time about uh, a guy who finds a radio, was it the radio station that's playing the film score? It, but it eerily goes with his life. And, and over the course of his day, it, it's getting more and more creepy and creepier, like, and he's convinced he's gonna die. And so the visual version of that, I thought was like, you have a button and he's hitting it and you change color tones and it felt like a uh, one of those movies you have to watch before a movie, like Regal Cinema's like a Pepsi filmmaker challenge yeah. thing. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, in concept, it totally <laughs> felt like that. Like the magic of cinema. <laughs> and so the intention was that, okay, we have this very accessible... Yeah, you know, it's funny. If you take this movie and just put a Diet Coke in my hand the whole time, it's like, it, it it's the work, same whatever, thing, yeah. <laughs> That's the origin of the button. The button is, is the reason the film the button. exists. And now we're at our main weekend shoot. I don't know if this was day one or day two. Or no, it was, it was day one. No. Day three, I think. It was day three. You have a leaf blower hitting you in the face, and it's freezing cold at yeah. this point, right? Tell me her wedding dress. Wedding dress. Uh, that's, this? that's my wife's wedding dress, yes. And how is she wearing it running in a film? Uh, I told Shannon I needed a wedding dress, and Shannon pulled the box out of the closet and unsealed it and opened it up and said, here you go. So if you guys haven't figured out, Neil's wife rules. Yeah. But she is, the idea is she is running from, you know, the altar yes. to her real love, which is Ben. And you can see there she's wearing black flats. Which, but we wanted, because we wanted, wife, her, yeah. wanted her running yeah. any, with the high school. Any bride yeah. would be. And I, I don't know, I guess it was you made the determination that we weren't going to make her run barefoot like we made Ben run. Ben, we, you barefoot all day long. But, yeah, but I real, brother. But any, real uh, actors, no. No, we're going with my brother. It's like, I, I, there's a limit of safety that just goes beyond the limit of safety. Yeah. And she's carrying, like, who's about carrying the high heels? Was carrying like the high heels. But yeah. also wearing shoes. So she yeah. put yeah. on other shoes to, to run, carry her to wheels. I said, it's yeah. okay, no one will notice. Or and she, then there's a close-up She had on the it backup shoes. Yeah, she ran from the altar, stopped, got her backup got shoes. Got her backup from shoes. Her, from the green room, yeah. from the dressing room. My, my question here is, if you've got a beautiful woman running to you, why do you push the button? That's, yeah. Well, because I think I'm freaked out by it's what's the going on. It's the curiosity. Did the, did the button get me here? Am I going to get a more beautiful woman? So I'll push <laughs> the button. Yes. That is a great assumption. Am I going to get a more beautiful woman? <laughs> the next woman. one. Two. Will there be two? <laughs> so the Jeep was my Jeep. Whatever, it's in everything. I, it's in, and we'll cut to the footage of this. It's in Adventure Now. It's in the time closet. And you know why it's in the film and parked in front? Because it's free? Well, it's free, but you know why there's even a car there at all? The jump. It, it's film noir is because I needed for film noir oh, the, for their the practical headlight. lighting. Yeah, I, needed, the headlight. I needed a source of practical light, and, and headlights are like a major thing, you know, in all those films. And so it was there for that reason. And then we ended up getting used as a barricade in action. I think it was like right after this, I found out that about I have a back problem, 
And I remember the doctor asked me, have you done, have you like done anything crazy? And it's like, he, he's like, have you done anything strenuous? Yeah, strenuous. No, this? not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Being shot like at. 50 times. Like, and that assassin is a rather attractive assassin. Sure. Yes, sure is. Some would say overly attractive yeah. overly assassin. Attractive. <laughs> That's me. That's Neil. That's me, everybody. At the peak of his deadliness. That's a me. So the original music here was the first thing I did and said, it was the best lesson I ever learned with when it comes to writing for stuff like this, like comedy, is that the music has to be, has to be convinced that the movie's serious. Otherwise, it's way too cheesy. And I did this ridiculous 70s action cop thing, uh, song, and the track, and it was actually, it was really funny. But, it was just like Shaft Yeah, it was funny on its own, but when, like, you were, no, you were just saying, it's so funny, though, it's so right. good. And I, as your older brother, then took on the role of being obnoxious and trying to hammer it into you, and we're like, no, being, it has to be, like, Die Hard, you have to take it seriously yeah. and not. You can't know that it's funny. And then we went and recorded it, and the new one sounds. And it's great. And you ha what I love is you have this, like, flute or yeah. something in it. Oh, that was just a crappy just, synth we were But it's with. so 80s because it's... Look at all that gear! It's like, yeah, let's look, look at all this. that. All the film gear. It's, no, that's all of our our gear just sitting, sitting in the Sitting behind the Jeep. And, and that car was the not car parked part, there. It's like Chris Adams' car yeah. or somebody's back <laughs> right there. So uh, something that was important was, to us was that we don't, like I talked about it before, was that we don't take... The color, gra color grade is not the only thing that uh, illustrates the genre. Yeah. Uh, so we watched a lot of old material. We watched, and like Die Hard... The big thing that stood out on these old action films, one was that they use these, they use long lenses. Yep. A lot of long lenses. Yep. And they're anamorphic too, so there's a lot of warping going on. Mm -hmm. And we got to get the anamorphic look from uh, uh, Vid Atlantic in this, their Cinemorph adapter. You put it on the front of your lens, and it literally will just simulate the bokeh, which is uh, like this stretched bokeh, which anything that's out of focus gets like stretched. Yeah. It also simulated the horizontal flare. Uh, so we use that throughout this sequence. Um, the other thing was that everything had this purpley, pinkish tone. Mm -hmm. And it was because of VHS. transfers. It was a transfers from film to whatever to yeah. VHS. And so everything we watched had this faded tone to it. And so we wanted to give our film that look. Uh, and we clearly did. With a lot, really grainy. Yep. Really kind of flat curves across the board. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of contrast. Not a lot of contrast. We grew up watching these movies in 4x3 on VHS. Mm -hmm. uh, and these were shot like two, three, five, two, three, nine. Yeah. Super wide aspect ratios, and and cut down to pan and scan. But that's what we grew up seeing them on. So we saw them, and we got used to them in a claustrophobic. Yeah. Framing. Yeah. And so we wanted to frame the stuff that way too, and having it be very crammed, even though it's sixteen by nine, still like cramming as much into the frame as possible. Having stuff get cut no up on the sides. No room to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. No room to breathe. Uh, the cinematography. Everything is being shot very straightforward, matter of factly. Like this shot is a close up of Mel Gibson shooting something. Like <laughs> it's it, it's just like literally like oh we need to see a shot of him picking up the phone. Let's just zoom in on the phone and show him yeah, picking up the up. phone. And the other thing is. There's so much coverage from those kinds of yeah. angles. Yeah. And especially like his action sequences of two people hiding behind a car. You watch Leave the Weapon, and like you're, they're just cutting so much for almost no reason in the middle of lines. It's like uh, editing on cocaine, which, yeah, for a reason probably, yeah. you know, maybe from the 80s. And the other thing is, so much of the dialogue is clearly blatantly ADR'd. So back then you'd get all this dialogue that sounded so close and clear. Well, yeah. the camera oh, yeah. was, camera was when, clearly when a mile away. they're in convertibles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're in convertibles, the camera's like two miles away. And I don't know what I was just watching recently, they were in a helicopter. And they're like right up the Yeah, the they're like, well, the believe. action movie's over now, so it's quiet. <laughs> Even though we're in an open helicopter right now. <laughs> What's this glass? I can't remember. It was CD, uh, those, CD cases. Those were old CD cases that we just broke up. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Some of the pieces were actually pretty dangerous. Like, would <laughs> land in my hair and they would be really painful. And he would find them later well, when he was that, it. I don't know. There was a little the album art is still in it. So you're yeah. seeing, like, DC yeah, Talks. Yeah. Like, DC Talks. They're all old <laughs> CCM. The, the close-ups of the, or the jewel cases. over the shoulder angle that you had jewel? before. Jewel they're called jewel cases. The, 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 the jewel, uh, Neil's old jewel albums. That's all of my old jewel albums. <laughs> the, all two jewel, albums. Jewel and DC Talk. That's when we were what I shooting the to. other angle, the over the shoulder, the close up or whatever of me, you kept having Neil throw the glass down. Um, well, yeah, because and throw the, it no, harder, no, but then harder. When you were you were shooting that, you said more and more, and Neil ran out or something, and you reached behind the you were behind the camera set, and you reached and grabbed it and threw it from the other direction. <laughs> so glass is coming at me from both sides where that wouldn't be happening. Yeah, um, this right here, this is back on the pickup day. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we didn't have close-ups of inserts of the button. Yeah, we didn't have inserts of the. We didn't get to use our paintball gun. Talk about the paintball gun. So we bought a paintball gun. Which is that? Yeah. What's it called in Swimming Gun? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think so. Because we saw on the Lost behind the scenes, 
this guy off screen like lazily just shooting paintball guns yes. at the actors. And yes. we're like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is this guy's job? And so we found out that that's how they make like bullet squibs is they, they use a paintball gun and they get paintballs and they fill them with Fuller's Earth. And when you shoot them, the, the paintballs dust. explode and the dust goes everywhere. And so this was on our pickup day. And I remember very clearly that I brought out the paintball gun and I also had a, because it came with a box of real paintballs. You had yellow paintballs. And you jokers like, Shot lighting house. your house up. I remember you guys, that I mean, being your idea. Hey, no, you guys want to shoot some paintballs? Man, I don't remember that. I, mean, I just I remember you guys deciding it'd be a good idea to shoot your mom's house, like over and over but again. But it wasn't. Oh, and then mom and came out. And yeah. then she came out, and, and you she said didn't nothing. See. She came out to get the mail. Like, she didn't notice walks it. Walks out, <laughs> waves at us. Well, behind her is this <laughs> tapestry of orange paint and and demolition, and she gets the mail and walks back reading the mail. And we are frozen. Neil has his key in the ignition. Uh, so for each of these genres, I thought it'd be fun. We made this five years ago, um, show off Magic Bullet. Two things have happened since. Color trends, like color grading trends, have definitely evolved and changed. Yeah. And also Magic Bullet has just gotten even more powerful with yeah. color. And so I thought it'd be fun to kind of show how I would color this now if we made this now. So now oh, we, cool. have, we have Red Giant. Red Giant mm -hmm. Universe has VHS, which is amazing. It built from analog sources and materials. Uh, put like all, elements all put together, and it's it's a drag and drop plugin. It's amazing, but super customizable and powerful. You have all these different VHS looks. It's everywhere. It's on Saturday Night Live. Wasn't it a Nicki Minaj video? I want to say Ariana Grande. Those are the same person, right? They're the same person. <laughs> Adam Lucigor used it brilliantly. And did you see a like, Computer Show? No. Sandwich Video Mate. Oh my God! You have to see Computer Show. You would love Computer Show. So. With action, it's not super different. We'd still keep that pink and purpley like tone. And with Magic Bullet Film, what's great is I can actually start with a layer of Magic Bullet Film that gives it <coughs> like a little film stock without being gimmicky, and then have VHS be the gimmick that I drop on top. So it looks, it's the same process as the original films, which is shot on film and then converted to VHS. Yeah. So like Romance, I would actually give it more of a warm, mm. a hazy overlight. Overlight from Universe is really, really great because um, it has these great light leak kind of uh, flares that go over that are more hazy mm -hmm. than anything. Less diffusion and more like lifted darks, mm -hmm. lifted shadows. Yep, because that would create some haze on its own. Exactly. For sci-fi, I do a lot more of more squeezing the color palette where there's the shadows are actually desaturated a lot more. Mm -hmm. Skin tones are the most saturated part of the of the film, and you have a lot more uh, color contrast between like not just not just teal and orange. Because teal and orange is now actually becoming more of like a just blockbuster, just any big movie. Yeah. Well, and that's not even like it's not even the saturated teal and orange anymore because it like, it like it's you know it's changed so much. It like it you know. Color grading started, it seems, like in this. Uh, I th this is just my assumption from watching films with no film history. This is not a film history lesson. It started as like a make all the shots look the same and make sure these don't look bad. Yeah. Uh, and then it became more of a stylized, you know, more of a, hey, we can use this to actually stylize the film and actually enhance the visual of the film. And then it went through a period of like, let's crack it to hell, yeah. Domino, Tony Scott Domino style. And it's like blown out saturation, yeah. Yeah. crazy uh, film stocks. And now what's going on are these kind of two factions that are happening. One is the like Vimeo music bed, like online indie filmmaker, like kind of movement that's actually much more naturalistic. It's almost like a, an unconscious rebellion against that Tony Scotty, like teal and orange, crazy blockbuster look. And it's a much more naturalistic, flatter, lifted shadows mm -hmm. look that I would, uh, kind of, uh, I would definitely apply to the indie section here now. Meanwhile, blockbusters are going more toward a visual effect, essentially, like like Roto going on. There's like sky replacement is now like in Mad Max. Sky replacement was a part of the color grading process. Yeah. They're doing stuff like basically they're basically lighting, relighting the film in post now. And yeah. Especially on ads, you're like you're doing tons of cosmetic work on actors too. Like and and what's great is you know because you know the whole point you know of this whole thing is to plug Magic Bullet and thankfully I can confidently. What's great is Magic Bullet is evolving with these trends and they're like Magic Bullet Cosmo is our built-in tool that's in looks and it's also its own separate thing that can that cosmetically cleans up uh, skin blemishes there's uh, tools devoted toward like you know uh, there's it's evolving there's even cooler stuff in the works um, so that he can't tell us I about can't <laughs> tell you about um, and that brings us to film noir this is after a full day of shooting yeah. zombies. Zombies yeah. and all that stuff that's raining. And, it's and rained that whole day. So we did the half day on Friday, which on was Friday. action. Yeah. And then we were going to do that night, but it was raining. We're like, we'll wait yeah. till tomorrow night. Yeah. But when it was not raining. raining. <laughs> no, it was sci-fi, right? During the day? Sci -fi. Some sci-fi. We shot sci-fi. We shot, we shot everything else. We shot independent 
We shot indie that day too. Yeah, we shot indie. We started with zombies. We shot independent. We, we shot sci- we day. shot we shot zombies. We shot independent, and we shot sci-fi. And we broke for dinner, and we came back and shot this. Most of these guys were working for free software. Yes, correct? they were. They were all working for free software. Which was this was the first time we were to do that, so it was a big deal. Yeah. It got harder as the films. Yeah, went because on. they all had it after, <laughs> they all had software. after the first one. They all had the software. What else are you going to give me? This was an interesting setup for DP because I was still in my phase of my control freak phase of not completely handing off camera responsibilities to you, a DP. You touch the camera a lot, I Seth. still. The, whoever came on the DP would basically be demeaned down to like a gaffer who would just yeah. be lighting stuff for me. Mark Coward, uh, who I gave him DP credit for the film noir sequence because this, he totally owned this because Mark is a perfectionist, major perfectionist. Yeah. And your job as a director is basically to tell him to settle for less That's constantly. <laughs> and, and a tear silently rolls down his cheek when you do. It always is. He turns toward the camera in frame while filming. I remember like letting him work as long as he wanted to to prep each shot. But he did an amazing job here because uh, it looks so film noir. It's this high contrast. Most of the cinematographers at this time had had been working most recently to this as documentary film uh, filmmakers in the war. And so they were used to lighting with available light and practical lighting and, yeah. and with very little resources. And so they got back and not only were these stories being told that were much grittier, much more nihilistic, they were coming back and working the way they had been trained for the past several years to be working with very practical light. So the lighting either is or feels like it is totally there, like it was there on the day. It's coming from a specific source. And because of that, it's all very high contrast, um, very little middle ground, lighting-wise. Yeah, all the blacks are super crushed. Uh, it became much more expressionistic in the way things were lit and framed. And that's the thing that I, what hit me, was they shot stuff like a kid who just got his first camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, they're putting stuff in drawers, cameras in drawers, they're shooting through like scopes and like and yeah. uh, holes in the door. They're filming down at people, up at people. We were very intentional about shooting this. One, obviously the practical light, the Jeep provided the practical light and that was the reason the Jeep is there. But we also shot a lot of wide angle lenses. Um, so we would feel like we were, it, the characters would feel larger than life like they do in the old films. We'd be right up there with them and it would feel cramped in a different way. Like we were shooting yeah. in a smaller space. Yeah. And then Mark lit it all. He put just enough light on the house back there. Yeah. Uh, and but but just like just less than enough so it feels Aren't you Neil laying on the porch behind the yeah, because the smoke, machine, smoke, machine. The smoke yeah. machine kept crapping out. So he was sitting there oh, kicking really? it yeah. and pressing the button over and over again? Yeah. You're laying on the porch back there? Yeah, behind, under that light under the window. Yeah, I'm sitting on the porch. He's right there behind the <laughs> right behind, there. Yeah. Behind this bush on, on, on the porch, yeah, laying the, down. Because the smoke machine kept quitting. And that is also, that's smoke and rain back there. Yeah. Which is contributing so much to this. Uh, and so the camera's under a tent. Which the you tent, were basically, right, the tent meets right in front of me. And so that's why you're actually getting a lot of foregone rain every now and then is because it's dripping off the side of the tent, yeah. which actually helped us. This narration was written by Aaron. I wrote a version of it. Aaron had the balls to not only suggest notes, he wrote, rewrote it and sent me script pages back. Nice. And like any writer would feel, you get it back and you're like, F you, I'm yeah. not reading I'm this. I'm not reading yeah. this. And I, and I read it and I'm like, oh, well, he's right. This is actually better. Yeah. It was really funny the way he did this, but you asked me to record this. And I, I don't know why. Oh, the narration? I, yeah, and I went, I didn't, I don't remember what it was. I either didn't have a mic or something, but I took my computer in my car because it was the most quiet place I could find, recorded it, and I sent it to you and I said, is this good? <laughs> I remember your response was like, what, did you record this in your car? Don't, aren't you a musician? Do you not have mics? You were so frustrated. It was like, just, how do you not, it was, you were making fun of me and I went, yeah, I did record it in my car. And you go, just we'll record it on the day. Like it was like, you tried to get it ahead of time and it was, <laughs> it was so bad. So who are you acting to there on the day? Who's reading the lines there? Huh? Oh, you were. Was it me? I think you were. So it's basically audibly the same because we sound yeah, exactly. like the same person. And Lydia is so good in this. This is like made for Lydia. Lydia comes from, who worked at Love With Us at Lifeway at the time, from the Fuge world, was in Adventure Now as Ava Dobley, the character who my daughter's named after. She was extremely dedicated and aggressive. It was really funny. <laughs> it wasn't hard for her probably to slap you. Yeah. She was great. And as you see, we get these great, this is one of my favorite shots in the whole thing is this shot looking down at her, because I love, it's my over your shoulder, so shooting great. right down. Yeah. And this is another example of how great, of how, of your performance of intentionally making you annoyed and. Upset. I do remember that her tears were not because she was upset or angry, but that she was so cold. She was crying. They're real tears? Yeah. Oh, man. We joked here when I first did that first take, reaching down, you went, it just looks like you're trying to turn the camera off. Like, how do I How do I hit unrecord? <laughs> <laughs> <Where's> the, <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're just trying to turn the camera off and shut this movie down. 
And I was, and we started laughing because then every time I did it, I couldn't not think about that. I forgot that. Yeah, like I love what I love about that scene, of the show, though, is that you're talking, you and the talk right. narrator are talking this over each over. other. How do I do this? <laughs> I turn this off. I love the eerie. Yeah, great, thank you. Shut up. <laughs> thank you. Like you're being kind of polite. Yeah. This shot, I think you can see the tent. Army cropped it out. That you can actually. Yeah, it was right there. The original shot, you can see the tent in the corner of the frame, because um, we somehow the camera is still under the tent. This is the last shot of the night. You hit it. And now this shot, we actually, we don't have a jib or anything. We put this on a slider. You put it on the slider, well, a, the crappy slider. Not slider. to point out mistakes, but this always confused me that I am now, I have turned completely 360 from where I was standing. I was facing, you can't tell necessarily. No, you haven't. No, because I was, was facing like the opposite was, way he was of facing, the house. He was facing the street. And now I'm now facing the house and the in street's In actuality, he was, okay, I can tell you, and my vision was that he was not. And I'm not the way we shot it, he was not. You turned. Oh, I turned! See? Shoot. But in, when we shot it, I didn't. I just There's no reference for the audience to know that. Right. Well, see, so you hit it. And so, and then it pans up here. So in you this know one, what? I was. This is a great this situation where I was going to get it in two shots. Yeah. And cut to that. Because I was trying to be practical and knowing we had a lot to get in a day. And Mark Coward, great DPs, will look at your ideas and say, why, why don't we just do the better version of this? Yeah. Can I actually move up? He, put, he basically mounted the camera on the end of the slider and then used it like a dolly yeah. on the tripod. Oh, yeah, and, and it's and it's, and it's not, in, not in the middle of the tripod. It's no. not slightly off. Yeah. We put a sandbag on the back, so it had some, yeah. some, you could, some it balance. Like a jib. And I think Chris, I had the help of Chris Adams and Mark Cower both. Chris was just camera hopping at the time. He went on to DP, Spy vs. Guy, and uh, Old New and Rogan. He's on uh, an old uh, go bag. It was like the three of us working together yeah. to make sure the tilt was the same. Because someone had to work the, the camera, yeah. or someone had to tilt. And, and if, we, to... if it was not completely perpendicular to Ben, then when we came up, it would be Dutch yeah. because of the way that we had this thing mounted. So these are all of our friends. Neil, talk about how you went about, because logistics were your job, but you're like, how do we go get all these zombies? Uh, I basically asked people to come be zombies. And so the you guy- You a Facebook group, right? Like, it's a Facebook event, like Zombie Day or something? There like might that? have been, God, I don't remember. I know, yeah. it's been so long. It's so long, they yeah. had the internet then, right? Like yeah, had... We did have the internet, <laughs> yeah. So, but lo looking at this, like that shot right there, I see all these people in it that I didn't really know at the time. They were more like your friends or friends of Lydia's. Because like Aaron and Melissa are in it. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I barely Micah's knew Micah back there. at it's all. Micah. That's, yeah. the, um, that's Micah, the pizza guy. And there's a pizza guy. Yeah, and he's pizza delivery guy. Pizza guy and yeah. he's also this was the his, designer like, of the opening titles. Like he's been with us for maybe five minutes yeah. at that point. Austin Huff's in there. Yeah, Austin Huff. Okay, Austin. Aaron Linney and, and Austin uh, um, and Neil. Ashley Linney. Yeah. When we first, the next shot when I get when they're all crowded me and they lift me up. Um, you had a stool under me. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Yeah, no, but you'd put a stool under me and you said, and then it, the last second you go, lose the stool, and Austin and Neil go, we got it, and you just lifted me up. Yeah. And it was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever been. <clears throat> I don't think it was a stool, it was, a, it was an airy light kit box. Or something, yeah. yeah. Case. And you were like, lose the box, and so they just lifted they, me and grabbed I wanted, me. Because yeah. I wanted you to be lifted up off your feet right. toward the end of the shot, and I wanted. Um, so that was just the most intimate Austin Huff. Well, and when, they and you guys up, when they picked you guys up, when they picked you, when you guys oh, picked up. Oh, we've been up. much more intimate. <laughs> <laughs> but it was after that. It was after yeah. that. Right. That I, just was remember the spark. When, I remember when they picked you up. I hadn't thought about the fact that it would be hard to pick up and hold a guy up in the air. Yeah. For so long. Ah. And so we got that like it. Also, this shot real quick. This is another shot of Mark Coward saying, "Yeah, the better version." Was this an accident? I wanted this to be the shot. This is cheesy hands in the foreground shot, and Mark zoomed in to focus, and we all Dying busted out happened. laughing, yeah. like. Realized that was the That's way funnier the better thing. version. Yeah. Yep. So we got oh, no car. There's no cars now. No cars there now. So here we have Aaron. Let me, you guys grabbing yeah. the arms. Aaron's terrifying. They're all Aaron like McGowan's Aaron McGowan so is scary. one of those terrifying zombies. Yeah, Aaron here. with the bleeding eyes. She, look at yes. her. She's so scary. Jeez. She got like a five year like at Facebook. We cherish your memories. We thought you'd like to look back on this time of your past, and it's a shot of her bleeding from the eyes. Nice. <laughs> I like that shot where you lift them up and swing them around. Everybody just as this horde goes with you is so cool. So feet up off the ground now, on the airy kit. Oh, can we talk about the shooting editing style of this? I was afraid of gore. Yeah. At this point, and yeah. I wanted to do a green. I think my thing was like. That's the cartoony version of zombies. It's like this green, I don't know why. I, just, I have this thing, this is before World's End came out. I have this thing I love alien, like men in black. Alien and blood, yeah. I, love, I love alien blood, like blue and green. Like I yeah. love just re like immense amounts of gore and in not blood color. Like it's yeah. just great It's really me. great. And I thought, well, to keep this from getting too 
gory. I mean, like, cartoony zombies are green often. And so let's do green. And you were the one who came and said, like, because Walking Dead had just started? Yeah, Walking Dead had just yeah. started. Uh, but, like, you came in my office and said. I don't remember what I said. You don't? No, what did I say? You just said, hey, look. People who know zombies, they want real zombies when we see zombies. Yeah. And we're going to lose our credibility at the scene if you show, like, something that's not that. You, you, you that sounds like me. I mean, you were just like, I understand why. You're like, hi, hey, I'm Neil. Because hey, I, I, I get it. Because I'm a zombie guy. I get <laughs> yeah, it. I understood. And, but I think what we discussing it came to the agreement of, like, I think the term, and I think it's in the BTS, was the 7 p.m. ABC. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I remember. I remember us was, negotiating yeah. the level of gore because I remember talking about, are we going to have missing limbs? Things like that, and you said no. You wanted it. Seven. No bloody stumps. Yeah, like blood is present, but it's like aftermath blood. Yeah, and not active blood. I guess. Yeah, no spurting. Also, Seth, uh, this starts here. You told me okay. that uh, that you loved in action movies that it seems like action heroes always have other people's blood instead of their own on them. Yeah, and this is the start of me getting everything gross on my shirt. That's true. We did. Oh man, we had we started. We wanted stuff to build up on you because that's the uh, real yeah. hero has other people's blood and other creatures' blood on him by the end of the movie, yeah. and his own plenty of his own blood too. We had one shirt, right? Yeah, was, yeah, we had Dylan one Jones, shirt. My friend Dylan Jones's yeah. shirt, and he said, and "No, after, no, I bought that shirt at Target." No, not the shirt, the undershirt. Oh. I'm wearing the overshirt is my friend Dylan Jones who left it at my house, and after like a month after we recorded, we shot this. He was like, "Hey, I showed it to them," and he goes, "That's my shirt," and I was like, "What?" And I was like, "Oh my, is it really?" And he goes, "Yeah." I don't think I want it back because it was like so much gross stuff. And what I was that process. Neil in made me, I Neil just made me take had... a shower with all the clothes on to get it all clean, and then he would dry it while oh, I was really? waiting. Yeah. yeah, I would walk upstairs covered and everything, and yeah, take a full shower to with all the clothes. To, I would film, <laughs> film, been taking a shower, and then he would go dry the clothes after I'd already. I remember you saying, "Hey, off. we can't shoot for another twenty minutes. I got to dry this thing or something yeah. like that." Yeah, we were running it through laundry and everything. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. At any given point, it would have Axe body wash on it. it yeah, because you didn't do it in order, so it was always yeah. Yeah. That's a miracle that we got, with one shirt, we got all yeah. this stuff. Yeah, Stylistically, camera-wise, it always, these films, like Romero's earlier ones especially, all felt like he rented a camera and he only had it for a weekend. <laughs> and so, it's like all handheld, and he's also getting kind of film noir in terms of like like a kid filming stuff. Like he's he's trying to do camera moves, like elaborate camera moves and stuff, and I was like, this is my thing, like my jam. Yeah. And then in post, we went through several different looks. We went through like a post-apocalyptic look, mm -hmm. but we found the way we shot this with the old Romero style, just grindhouse-y, well, misfire look. I better. remember because, because it was raining, that it looked you cool. wanted it to be super dry and dusty looking. That's right. And because it was raining, <laughs> we couldn't get that look. And so you said, what if we went grindhouse? And just super, it was on the day. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, and it was super grainy. It's and, way better this way. Yeah, and I've always say like you want to make movies like problem solving. It's yeah. your job to turn problems into like your ideas. Yeah, that's when it became '70s Romero, Day of the Dead. This, then they have the theme here in guitar. Oh, oh, yeah. My favorite thing is that we can scratch his face, but none of us can bite him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Nobody ever bit him. They've got clear paths to you. The idea was keeping the camera moving as much as possible so no one noticed. So no one notices that Ben doesn't get We bit. did that button flip like 17 times, didn't we? That was the, last, that was the best one. And it does this, gr I found the sound effect that just did this vroom thing. Yeah. The sound effect from the sound effects back Arn sent me. I remember right before we released it, the previews for new Transformers, the had previews all for the newest them, Transformers when yeah. we came out. And the, in the trailer, one of the Transformers like, yes, cocks I remember his like, the gun same or something, noise. and it's the yeah. same yeah. noise. And it fits with the music, so it was just like, it was the, bum, the, bum, bum, the, bum, the third Transformers movie was coming out. Yeah. yeah. Revenge of the Fallen, is that what that I one was? Know. Or who knows? The third Revenge one. Revenge of the Sith, I think. Uh, Revenge of the Sith, that's what it was. Return of the Jedi. M mattress. This is the, no, this is the worst, the shot of him falling. I have B-roll of it. We put the green screen on the ground. My idea was to film me falling on a, there was like a padding and then a green screen and then you would fall on the green screen and I would replace it with asphalt. That did not work at all. At it looked all. terrible. Yep. I might even have earlier cuts of like the, us attempting it. Uh, so I just scaled the thing up and had you fall past frame. I can't believe we got away with that because it looks so bad looking at it. So Indy. <clears throat> The, Super wide. I, I was, remember the angle. I remember the lens on this thing was awesome. I opened up the old project file for this film, and I found that indie. It was easy to spot because it's like three shots. Yeah. And they're long. Yeah. Everything else is all these rapid takes. When I always thought this shot is the one that would have the official selection film festival graphic. <laughs> <at the top. laughs> and all these shots are, they're pret as pretentious as they can be, but also as 
on Epic and unambitious yeah. as they can yeah, be. Yeah, I remember you wanted it to be it's just flat and gross. Oh, that shark's on my shelf, too. I love that we get the shark sound in the raw audio. Yeah, no doubt. It's this squeak, squeak thing. Caleb is so funny in this. Neither. It's like he's breathing and talking Neither. with every line. <laughs> And I love, we love the line, I think I'm going to tell you I'm in yeah, love with you or yeah, something. Yeah. We laughed out loud at that because it's so non-committal. Like, yeah. <laughs> Just feeling it out to see what she, how she responds to that before <laughs> he actually to commits to well. it. Exactly. But I have a feeling in this kind of movie, that's the response he was looking for. Let's talk about the shirt songs. The shirt song we, uh, we were recording in that 10 by 10 box at Jake's Lake House. And Jake, I said, I remember texting you asking, can I put lyrics in it? And you said, absolutely, there should be lyrics in it. And then you gave me some examples of terrible, like, ridiculous songs you found, or old songs you had, or something. And Jake goes, well, I don't know what to write about it. I go, no, 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 we just hit record and you sing about anything, anything at all. And so he pulled out a guitar, detuned it, so it was way out of tune and gross. And then he looked at me, and I forgot what shirt I was wearing, and he just started singing about a shirt. What's I funny see is, you've got a shirt, I guess that's take, pretty cool. The first take is our only take. Yeah. <laughs> that was love, Seth's idea. You just Kill, like you know, shoot yourself in the head with it. Well, and the idea was then you get up and we just surround you with terrifying demolishment, destruction. Oh man, who is it being the crap bad. out of Jeff in the background? That's me and Jeff in the yeah. background. So let's talk about this in the oh, background. Who? That's Jeff Venable. That's me and Jeff who shot all the BTS on this. Yeah, they were running around the car a second ago, just chasing yeah, each other. Chasing each other, and now we're about to slug it out. I just said, "Be fighting." I need dis action, destruction going on. <laughs> we have the worst ham-fisted fight. But do you remember how I wouldn't <laughs> say cut? No, there was, there was, were, a, yeah, we were back there <laughs> fighting, like, like panting because like we've, we've been fighting so hard. And then we heard you say, action. <laughs> we were like, what the? I remember you guys at one point, like, someone saying, should we tell them to stop while we're discussing the next shot? And I yeah. heard him and like, we were oh, going guys, you can full stop. bore. Like, we had no idea we weren't rolling. This is, that's that me. shot, okay, that the, shot, you guys are down, setting it up. I'm on top of a car. Hold on, right here. Yep. Yeah. On top of the car. So that shot, as as this, this money shot, that shot was, uh, was you guys were setting it up and you had walked away to talk to somebody or whatever and I turned to Mark and I went, what is this shot? And he goes, uh, Seth's going to put a spaceship right there. And I just remember he laughed so hard because I went, oh, it's probably going to look like crap. Because I was like really tired and pissed and I didn't know if you could do that or not. Like you'd never done anything that huge before. Yeah. So I was like, that's probably going to look like crap. And he goes, I really want Seth to put that over, <laughs> over to you saying that like, in behind the scenes, of you just going, this is going to look like crap with that thing approaching. This was one where I didn't know how it was going to look, and I was kind of trusting the resources that are I knew we kind of had access to now with Aaron. It does look really good, though. It does. Rob Redman. Uh, I always thought it looked like a Lego ship. Because he did little Lego elements. I don't yeah. know if that was on purpose or not. I've never asked him. It was a little cool way, look Lego it looks it's cool. great. Rob's an uh, amazing 3D artist. He made that, and I added flair. I added a bunch of smoke and things on it. And, dude, it just and he killed. Like I, I was able to luma key the sky, so we got the branches in the front and stuff. And... Um, the shooting and editing style of this, obviously the style of the way this separates is like, Michael Bay. camera's always moving. Yep. Flares, 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 yep. flares. Uh, which is actually my production company name. No, flares, flares, flares. It's, it's flares, my Etsy flares, shop. Flares, flares. Uh, <laughs> blood, sweat, blood, sweat, and flares. Super ambitious and bold framing and blocking. Like, no shot is allowed to be uninteresting. Yeah. It either has to feel super kinetic and like you're there, or it has to feel... Uh, super stylized. Like, yeah. there's no like middle ground there. Um, uh, one I love your reaction is so Tom Hanks. The way you turn and look at him like, like can I help you? <laughs> he shoots, I've always loved this shot. I have a whole tutorial online, you can look at how I did it, but that's you, a combination of you jumping in on, on trampoline and flipping mm -hmm. and in front of the green screen. And jumping off an ice box. And then you eventually blend and jump into, off an ice box onto the ground. I think we covered you in smoke first and had you jump down. We found so the smoke would... trailed off of you. Yeah. Um, the ice box is right there. The it's cooler. in frame. Yeah. yeah, the cooler's in frame. Still have that cooler. Uh, this is great. David's over there. He has carrying. I think you had those cases that were for yeah, sound equipment. Are, no, they're for fusion splicers. I don't know what. Anyway, oh, that's funny. David that's is, David too. David's also the dead David guy. David is walking to get the button, and he's dead. He laid there for a long he time, there for, a for like long two hours, time. and he didn't complain once. No, the most David Morris compo like composure ever. There's the uh, original tempo gun. Yeah. Yep, the original tempo gun from Adventure No. Three. We were using a, reusing a lot of props from old stuff. That gun That's there we that he's carrying, the gun so he's stuff. carrying while he's walking is the gun I would on Halloween. I put a thing on it and a thing, and it was a, my Han Solo gun. Oh, nice. Well, this movie <coughs> got done because we had free software. Yeah. And old props. 
Yeah. Amen. And and my and my parents' yard. I would and, say that and is friends. The, and friends. Thank God. You've said friends. this already, but one one guy watching us out there is like, I've got that, I've got that, and we got the friends, and he's, oh no. <laughs> Never mind. We uh we you've probably said this before and whatever, but that mom watched this shot. I'm like, hey chum, check out this this scene. This shot. I'm blowing up her front yard. This is more visual effects than I've done so far in my career. And she's watching this and she's wow. And it's done, and she goes, Wow. Isn't Ben amazing? And I'm like, Mom, you know, he's not actually doing any of that. <laughs> and you know, Shia LaBeouf could do it even better. Yeah. And just as well. I, I, like I do jump, love those photon shots. The one that I jump, jump over. Yeah, you jump, boom. It's awesome. You don't jump over anything. Yeah. You kind of jump away from stuff. And it's not, it looks like it's going to be that high, but your foot hits the ground almost immediately. Yeah. But it's still awesome. It's in slow motion. That was cool. I love that. Boom. We freaked out. We saw that. And yeah. Bailey's cold. Picks this so up. Cold. We did several lines here, didn't we? We did Welcome to Earth. Yeah. What else did we do? I feel like we did Schools Out. Schools Out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I was still punching Jeff in the background. You yeah. <laughs> no, you threw. No, this is he's throwing axe on me. Yeah, I was throwing right. axe. You're standing by with the axe, and yes. you're throwing the button. I still love this explosion of David. Man, I still look it's at awesome. It. It's so good. It's a yeah. it, and you know why it's good. It's a combination of practical, like action essential stuff. It's a it's a ground uh, explosion, like a dirt explosion that I just desaturated and made the color of his yeah. suit. And then uh, it's a combination of particular and blood splatters all turn blue. And at the first couple frames is him. The first couple frames is him. Then it's <laughs> and it's him puppeted where I right. like I warped him, yep. cut off the top of him. Man, that's brutal. That frame yeah, that's yeah. so gross. <laughs> that's brutal. <laughs> that's rough. Uh, I trailed a little bit of him back there too. And then by then he's gone. I just in one frame replaced him with that dirt explosion uh, midway through and lots of camera shake. <laughs> shape I love that because it looks like you. It's more of a result than you were expecting yeah, from that. Yeah, exactly. Guy. <laughs> He's gone. Oh god! <laughs> I just made a big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so and then I caught it. Covered Neil threw it to Covered me. you with blue. I love the catching. And covered you with yeah. blue uh, axe body wash. I in post added it to the lens, and then you're off screen tossing the gun to him, or yeah. tossing the bolt, the button to him. I'm really gross. It's just well, that was the line from the beginning. It was just. Yeah. I think you might have said sick at one point, but that's really gross. Was just we used to crack up laughing at that line. It's the Cinemorph adapter that's real in-camera lens, uh, in lens flare. Stupid bullhorn trunk. Yeah, you had you had Chris or someone off-camera shining a light into it. Yeah, JJ style, shining a flashlight on the lens. Stuff's blowing up, but nothing's blowing up. I love this stuff. That's my choir at Franklin. Oh, there's actual choir in the music. Yeah. That's awesome. I forgot about that. That's it's, Thunderdome. It's firm and let me record then. Trap code form. The on-fire mail. Wait, why did we have you? I think I, we specifically orchestrated this move of you like windmilling your arm. Yeah, you said you wanted it to be. It's like there's way, no reason you would yeah, do it. Way over the top. But it looks well, awesome. Michael Bay. It is. That was inspired by the shot from The Rock with the flare. Yeah. The, the I thought yeah. you were going to do that in slow motion, actually. When the mail first... was our reshoot day because yeah. one of us was like, we should have the mail on fire. At the yeah. End. Wasn't it me? With the leaves. Maybe it was you. It was, yeah. And here are the shoes. I was like, no one will see him, and then I did a close-up <laughs> close -up of him, just like an asshole, like a, I'm sorry, like a real, <laughs> like a real idiot. What's great about this? Someone pointed this out. You smelled so good. You <laughs> smelled the Axe Body Wash. And this actual scene, it's a total contender for an Axe Body Wash commercial. Well, like, this whole thing is just a gigantic commercial for multiple products. But this scene is specifically, you are covered in Axe Body Wash, and a woman is like. All up on you. And leaving her husband. And leaving, her, <laughs> leaving her fiance. For a fiance. I love that now you're playing like along with it. Yeah. Romance. <laughs> She's like massaging your hand. Yeah. Your body wash mm. you. So um, then the end thing, these end titles were, we wanted to feel like a schematic. Micah did this like graph paper look. I want to say it was inspired a little by, there was a t like a Team Fortress poster. I think that existed that I thought was really cool, like a blueprint of Sentry Gun from or something like that, and they. And so we were going off of that kind of Valve Team matter, Fortress but style. When we were recording this, the brass players were like, "I had it written it where it was just sustained the whole time," and he goes, "Hey, man, can we take breaths in between each one?" And I was like, "I don't know what I'm doing." No, so actually. Yes. So there are people that still discover this film online because, like, now I'm I coach at a gym. And I had one of the guys that works out there come in one day and okay, hey, overly attractive assassin, just out of the blue. And so now, um, five years later at he the gym. He hadn't seen the film. He was just hitting on just hitting hitting very strange come on. Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here now, five years later, there, I still get 
crap for the overly attractive assassin. Why would you get crap? Because yeah. people think it's ridiculous. He's so much more attractive than all the other assassins. <laughs> Who's that? Is Elizabeth? This was so fun. So many word? people were zombies, right? Um, Digital juice. The bird. Elizabeth the bird. I just saw the John Knoll name in the end credits. John Knoll created No Light Factory, co-creator of Photoshop. He's been at Island for years. He did a couple things on a couple big movies. He's, this is the voice at the beginning of the short. Oh, that's right. Because it's an interview with Aaron that Aaron did with him, uh, and we needed something nerdy for you to be listening to, like film related. And I was like, just pulled back because of John Knoll, and it'd be like a fun little Easter egg. My brother-in-law texted me one time. I was like, right after the movie came out, and he was like, hey, is there a version online that it doesn't have commentary? I can't find it. And I was like, there's a version of commentary. He's like, my version is commentary. And he thought when it started playing that John Knoll's voice was the commentary was for the film. talking about the movie. Yeah. That's funny. So, so, so we should surprise, we have John Knoll John, here. Welcome to the studio, John Knoll, us, everybody. Oh, guys, I'm John Knoll. I'm really excited to be here and I'm really intelligent. And I, I missed the movie, I guess. And I, and I, <laughs> I'm very unassumingly, like, I'm one of the most intelligent people alive and I could kill you with my brain and my eyes, but I don't because I'm, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. Uh, Making working, awesome stuff. Ma Guys, so you said, no, play the thing. So you said, I said, said was, I, I have no idea who to get to play this bird. In post, we decided to do this. And you thing. said, and you said, just find someone who has an annoying voice. And I went immediately during school to my friend Elizabeth, who was in class. And I went, hey, can I borrow you for a second? And I brought her in. I was like, I need you to play a cartoon bird. She goes, why? And I go, because your voice is really annoying. <laughs> she goes, oh, okay, yeah, no, I got it. And then she, she did a take. And then I went, I'm sorry, can you be way more annoying than that? And that's the take that you used was... This ridiculous. It's so good. I, I barely pitched her voice up too. It's yeah, like, her, her voice is voice. naturally that loud, and it's awesome. Um, this just, was on, I, this was on pickup day. And then oh, pickup, I just remember we were just like, you know, he we need one more gag, and one of us was like, he should be stuck, so he should break it, thinking he is like free, like they destroy yeah. the time machine, and like I think it was like a joke, like what if in Back to the Future three he destroys the time machine, and, and then it like realizes he's in the alternate Biff universe or yeah. something, and he's um, screwed. Also, this uh, there's like four more verses in the song than you used. We were oh, we wrote way too many verses. It's all online, seeing like sun and shine. So, sun shine of butterflies fly. And so he did that whole thing, and then we went, I went. It doesn't sound happy enough, and he got his dad to come in and whistle, who's like Disney quality whistler. It was nice. amazing. So he did that, but then yeah, too. we wrote about like three verses of this and said that we use like the first line and then goes to the the scary thing. Well, the best part is we needed like the, when it shows space. Yeah. I mean, and, it, and it's the most like it's just the goofiest, yeah. most underwhelming. It was great sound to it. I mean, this is one of those movies that just kind of made it. So I mean, it was a lot of hard work. Yeah. But it was like every choice that felt like the right choice just worked really well. And we also didn't know any better. That's what was so fun about this. We didn't. We yeah. didn't have anything to compare it to. We were making this for free software, and, and just because we had the opportunity to push ourselves as much as possible yeah. to try new stuff. Everything after this has been kind of like, this is the world we're in now. Yeah. We didn't know we were working in a new world. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I, I'll never forget when it when it did go viral. You were, you texted me and said, do you know what's going on? And then, and then Dad told me. We released it, it, we couldn't, there were problems with the site or something, and it came out then that night, we had a release party. Yeah. And it came out that night, and the, the views were pretty big, they were mm -hmm. like fun and big, but then we, the next morning we woke up, and I'm walking to lunch at Lifeway, I remember seeing it was the Daily What that day, which I don't know if that's still around, but it was a thing then. I remember thinking like, that's probably the peak. That's probably, you know, this is really cool, this is the coolest yeah. we've gotten to achieve. This is really cool. By the time we got back from lunch, it was on io9, yep. it was on Slash Film. Yep. That was the one where Darren just texted me, holy sh**. Yeah. Like and I saw that text and knew immediately that it had to be on Slash Film. This is yeah. a big deal to us, because that was like our daily, go yeah. still is, daily yeah. go-to. And, and that's when the views jumped. Yeah, I, and then crazy. I found out about two or three months later that from BMI that like, I think it was like something crazy, like 40,000 people had torrented the soundtrack instead of downloading it or buying huh. it. They just really? totally ripped it off. And Jake and I looked at each other like, 40,000 people yes. stole our music? It was awesome. Now I'd be mad. Guys, thank you for watching this. this uh, yeah. yeah, fun times. This was really fun, five years ago. Yeah.